Long before there was national health insurance, Elan County had free medical care provided by a Catholic order called the Ministers of the Sick. This religious order, whose members were referred to as chameleons, arrived in Taiwan's countryside after World War II. Expelled from China by the communists, about two dozen chameleons settled in Taiwan and began a lifetime of service to the sick and the suffering. They built a major hospital from the ground up and treated the poor for free. Through decades of service, the chameleons have earned the trust and gratitude of generations of Ilan locals. Our Sunday special report. They use the scripture to comfort the soul and use medicine to restore the body. For Catholics spreading the gospel, healing the sick was a major part of their mission. In 1952, more than 20 Catholic chameleons were expelled from China's Yunnan province by the CCP. They eventually settled in Taiwan. <laughs> Most of the foreign priests, brothers and nuns went to Hong Kong. After they arrived in Hong Kong, our superiors, the Roman Curia, arranged for some to go to Thailand and others to Taiwan. There were two reasons for choosing Taiwan. First, Taiwan shared Chinese culture, so the people spoke Chinese. They chose two places, both remote places like Yunnan province. They chose two places in Taiwan, Yilan, which was very remote, and Magong City in Penghu County, which was very remote back then too. In those days, Yilan had a population of roughly 260,000. Healthcare was fairly good in Yilan City, but it was sorely lacking in the countryside. South of Lanyang Creek in Luodong Township, there were only a few small clinics and no operating rooms. In 1952, the chameleons took out a lease on a small private clinic that had 12 beds. One month later, they officially opened St. Mary's Hospital. At its opening, the hospital was staffed by only five priests and brothers, four nuns, and a Slovenian doctor named Janez Janez. On the hospital's third day of operations, it completed its very first surgery. Dr. Janez removed a 12-kilogram uterine tumor from a female patient. Dr. Janez came from a small village in Slovenia. After completing his medical degree, he returned to his village to work as a surgeon and later enlisted in the military when World War II broke out. In 1945, Slovenia came under the control of the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. When the party labeled him an enemy of the state and sentenced him to death, the anti-communist Janez was left with no choice but to flee the country. To escape with his life, he boarded a train. When he saw danger coming, he jumped into a wheat field. At that time, he vowed that if he successfully escaped, he would devote his life to serving the Catholic Church, helping people in poor and underdeveloped countries. He was resolved to do that from that moment onward. After Yana's escaped, he joined the chameleons and began practicing medicine overseas. Following the chameleons, he first spent several years in Yunnan before relocating to Taiwan. In the early years at St. Mary's Hospital, the operating room lacked a ventilation system. Homeostatic forceps and other surgical devices were in short supply. Medical staff performed surgeries under high watt light bulbs with big blocks of ice under their feet to keep the room cool. Even as more nurses were hired, the hospital was still severely understaffed. In 1954, Catholic missionary Andres Mazen visited the hospital and decided to raise funds to build a new surgical ward. In 1955, a new ward with over 100 beds was completed, making St. Mary's the largest hospital in Elan County. More clergy and medical personnel were brought in, taking the total past 50. Meanwhile, word of Dr. Yanez's medical expertise spread far and wide. Locals referred to him as Oki, which means big in Japanese, a mark of the reverence they had for him. 
As you can imagine, Yanez was extremely skilled. I've heard from some of my older colleagues that he would perform an appendectomy in six minutes. The branches of medicine are highly differentiated today, but that's not the way it was back then. He would operate on the entire body. He was very strict with the medical staff. When he was in the operating room, there was no joking around. If a nurse was too slow and made a mistake, he would scold her, scold her to the point she would cry. He was just extremely strict. But this was because he was so devoted to his patients. He knew that not a single staff member could afford to be careless or to make mistakes. No one, from the nurses to the brothers, was exempt from his temper. But the doctor was hardest on himself. He led by example, holding himself to the strictest medical standards. Even on days that he operated until 3 a.m., he would be at the hospital making his rounds at 8 in the morning the next day. The hospital staff regarded him with both fear and respect. He'd be seeing his patients, and if you were too slow in bringing him the patient, or if you told him the patient hadn't completed his forms yet, or if the patient didn't have money, then he would yell at you. Actually, he didn't care about the money. If he said he was ready, he wanted to perform the surgery, he wanted you to bring the patient somewhere, then you had to bring the patient there at once. It didn't matter if the patient had no money. No money, no problem. When Yanez worked, he stressed efficiency and he prioritized patients at all times. St. Mary's Hospital's reputation grew as the doctor performed more successful surgeries. With each operation, word about the hospital spread. Another leading figure at the hospital was Father Ernesto Valdosolo, who concerned himself with indigenous communities in the mountains. Valdosolo was from a small village in Italy where many locals devoted themselves to the church. Valdosolo joined the chameleons at 21 years old. When he was 34, he went overseas to minister to the sick. At 40, he arrived in Taiwan. At Hanxi village in Datong, there was an old lady who came to be treated but was unable to pay. Our priest treated her for free and then sent her home. She was very touched. Not long after, several villagers from Hanxi came to St. Mary's Hospital in Luodong. They asked Valdesolo, could you visit our village? Compared to other Taiwanese at the time, the Atayao people suffered from a lack of medical resources and supplies. For this reason, Valdosolo went into the mountains to bring help to the Atayao people. He carried supplies and medicine as high up as 12,000 meters above sea level. For many of the villagers, he came to serve as a father figure. Back then, the indigenous people were living very difficult lives. Many didn't even have food to eat. So Father Valdesolo went up the mountain every week. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, he was at St. Mary's Hospital. If there were some vegetables here, some meat left there, he would pack it up. On Friday, he would go back up the mountain and give the food to the indigenous people there. There were people who would call him Father Yaba. In Atayal, Yaba is a word for dad. So to the Atayal, he was like a dad. It's a term of respect. He would say, how is my family? If he saw that an Atayal child was sick, he would take money out of his pocket and give it to the family and say, this is just to help out a bit. Or he would share his noodles, some flour, or a can of food. He truly did look after us for more than a decade. In my mind, he was a good father and also a good priest. Back then, there was no health insurance and no farmer's insurance. We'd go to the hospital and not have any money. At St. Mary's Hospital, when it was time to be discharged, we would look for Valdesolo. You would find him and tell him we didn't have money. He understood. Without exception, our health care was free. Father Valdesolo had a positive impact on many indigenous communities in Elan County and one after another, local churches cropped up in the region. He established nine in total, and there were not only churches, but small medical clinics. Starting in 1959, St. Mary's Hospital began offering a self-service pharmacy. It began offering medical services in the mountainous Nanao Township. 
At their home base of Wodong, the chameleons treated not only indigenous people from remote communities, but also Han Chinese living in the main towns. In the 1950s, an outbreak of tuberculosis struck Ilan hard, killing more than 50% of those infected. In 1959, St. Mary's Hospital expanded into the county's Dongshan Township with the establishment of the Wanshan Sanatorium. This branch had 70 beds and focused on the treatment of tuberculosis patients. Brother Luigi Pavan, a trained nurse with years of experience in Thailand, was in charge of the sanatorium. Back then, there was no health insurance. Before health insurance, there was labor insurance and public employee insurance. But there was a portion of the population that had neither. Indigenous people in particular fell into this category. At the time, there was a disease that we don't have now, and that's tuberculosis. We Ilan people or Luodong people wouldn't say we were going to St. Mary's Hospital. We would say we were going to St. Mary's. When we said St. Mary's, it felt a bit like saying Mazu the Mazu of Taiwanese folk religion. At the time, Wan Shan Sanatorium was the only institution in the nation that treated tuberculosis. The facility offered refuge to impoverished tuberculosis patients who were able to get the care they needed at no cost. For locals afflicted with this dangerous disease, St. Mary's was like Matsu, goddess of the sea, a beacon of hope shining in the darkness.